to the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian, and today is Tuesday, October 10th, 2023, and this is episode 542 of the Lots Project podcast, where we're defying norms and designing freedom. Today's episode is titled Plan for Raw Land, the Vision for Delinquent Scully, and it's brought to you by Hip Camp. Today, I will be talking about Delinquent Scully, what's been done so far, what the future plans are, what I'm thinking, what I've uh, discussed with Tim, and what he's all in on. Uh, But first, let's grab that cup of coffee, catch up with what's going on, and have a little chat, and we will dive into that topic in just a little bit. How we doing? How we doing? Good morning. Morning, Hunter. How we doing over on Twitch? Rewild their life. Not so awake morning today, but I'm up. That's good. I think you were up way, way early yesterday, if I remember, on Telegram, and, uh, and a little sleepy this morning. And good morning, MSU Rifle. I'm going to be seeing you in a few days here. Excited for work day uh, out at Tim's. I'm excited to talk about uh, Delinquent Scully today on the show and then go spend the day out there with Tim, uh, kind of finishing up prep and things for work day on Thursday. Good morning, Pip. Thanks for stopping in. What is in the cup today? Uh, this morning, I have light Peruvian. Another light Peruvian. I think it will be gone today, actually. uh, I'll probably make a to-go mug to go out to Delinquent's Gully. We usually uh, take a little walk and talk when when I get there or uh, when Tim shows up. Sometimes we uh, we are a little little off on our arrival times because he'll have to go grab lumber at the lumber store and they... uh, it's a country lumber store. So, you know, it takes a little while before uh, you can get your stuff. You have a little conversation, which is good. You get to know the people there at the lumber store. But uh, I like to go sit and have a cup of coffee out in the woods and just uh, sit and wait for him to show up. So that's always nice. Uh, Rachel says 3 a.m. and work till 9 p.m. Today's home day. Apples, bushels of apples. Oh, man. Um. Let's see, clean, uh, MSU rifle, clean the truck out, then unboxed and fired up the generator last night. That's right. Did you say you, uh, you're bringing a brand new generator? <laughs> Backwoods says country lumber stores are the best. I think Backwoods thinks that uh, country feed stores are the best when his daughters are like behind running around the, running around the counter. And um, they pretty much own the place from what it looked like in the video I saw. But country lumber stores are are pretty cool. I grew I was um, I grew up in a smaller town. I guess when I was there, it was uh, eight thousand ish. I think from what I recall, we had a few lumber stores locally owned by um, by local families that have been kind of around forever, and they were always fun to go to. They always had uh, what were they the um, the Tim and I were talking about it. It's the lumber stores where the the shelves only go up as far as about your chest. You can see through the whole store, and they have pretty much everything on the shelves you'd ever need. And um, uh, it was, uh, I think it was an Ace, a small local Ace hardware where I found something I had been looking for. I went to all the big box stores. I went to all the, the bigger chain stores, and I went to this little privately owned Ace hardware. And man, I, I asked the guy at the front, this like crusty old man. It looked like he'd been there for years and years and years. And I said, <coughs> excuse me, I said, hey, uh, hey, you have, I can't even remember what it was. It might have been uh, kerosene in a in a can, like kerosene for a, a kerosene heater. Couldn't find it anywhere. I didn't really want to go fill five gallons. All I needed to do was run a heater for a little while. And I said, man, do you got any kerosene in a bottle? And he's like, oh, I think we had some of that. We haven't bought any in a long time. I might be sitting back on the might be sitting back on the shelf back there. And we went back and as we're walking past all the dusty parts and stuff, the place down the road had it on a, on a fuel pump. So uh, nobody sold it in the small bottles anymore. And I, uh, we walked past all the aisles with all the dusty old stuff on all the shelves. And he's like, Oh, here it is. And uh, yeah, down on the bottom shelf there, he had like three cans looked like they'd been there for about six years each. 
worked just fine. It worked just fine. It wasn't the first or last time. I'm sure I found, uh, I know I've found odd odds and ends, hard to find parts at uh, little corner stores like that. They just have everything. They buy everything over the years and then they don't sell all of it. They'll buy two or three once it's on the shelf. And that old crusty guy behind the counter knows exactly where everything is in that store. Uh, Miss you rifle says a friend killed mine that I used for years. He replaced it, have a full house generator. So haven't had a reason to use that one much. Yeah, we had, um, we had a generator in, uh, at the homestead when we first moved up there, there, we were, we were very worried about the power going out, um, being so rural and uh, older house and things. <coughs> so the first year we were there, we got a generator for Christmas just a small sportsman, uh, the small sportsman generator. And I sold it brand new when we left <laughs> it, it. We took it out of the box. I took the oil. I never started it. I never put the oil in it. I never put fuel in it, but I had all the stuff there in case we had to never tried it. And, um, yeah, when we were getting ready to leave, we bought the, we bought the Honda that we have and that was in the garage. And I was like, Oh, it's brand new. Never been, never been even the rope has never been pulled on it and uh somebody picked it up they were i was like yeah good good for you good for you i took it out never needed it once um we had lots of power flickers i don't think we ever had a power outage that was long enough that we even considered going out to think about starting the generator so there was a i had uh i had made a plan for switching over the um the furnace blower to the generator uh, hot, hot wiring that in if I had to, to run that. But that was about all we really needed as far as electricity, if the power went out for any significant amount of time. Uh, Backwood says there's a guy with suspenders smoking cigarettes in the wood lot, the wife that's working the register who doesn't want to be there. And the guy who's basically dead, who stares, he started the store. Yeah. The guy that's like on the, on, in the easy chair, he used to sit on a stool behind the counter, but then they uh, then he, they were afraid he was going to fall off when he fell asleep. So they they brought his recliner and put it behind the behind the counter at the store. He's like 108 years old. Ah man, this stuff's good this morning. Definitely good. I don't know what I'm going to open up for uh, SRF weekend. I don't know. I have um, I'm going to have uh, some perfect cup samples floating around i have some of that i also will have um silver bullet single packs for sale at srf so if you're coming to srf and you like uh you like really good coffee i'll have some for sale and uh i think it's a limited amount i think ryan said we were doing uh i think 30 or 40 i'll have 30 or 40 samples for sale It'll just be the one single pot um uh, pre-ground samples so be excited for that backwards bring your bring your cash so you can uh, pick up some more silver bullet and um now yeah, that's on my list actually for today for the coffee talk i started prepping for srf yesterday like you guys are all saying you were doing i um was kind of prepping for the table setup that uh, that we're gonna have we're gonna have community um community vendor tent so i think it's gonna be currently me Backwoods Butcher, um, Pip is coming up, uh, Kyle, and uh, I think Mike is going to throw some stuff on the on the the tables there at our at our tent. Did I mention Tim? I don't know. I don't even know what I was <laughs> what I was saying there. I had a list that I started on the on my page here, and I was like, oh wait, I know everybody that's going to be there. And obviously, I can only read lists. I can't even think in uh, think in real time while I'm listing them off. But anyway, I started the table prep up. I, I am uh, doing a mix of uh, QR codes and written written um, signage. I got. Uh, I'm gonna have some things for sale. I'm gonna have silver sets for sale. I have a few of those left. I'm gonna have. Uh, uh, we found a big old stash of rabbit foot keychains from when we were on the farm, like forever ago, that were packed away in uh, in a cooler that we had on the road with us that we didn't even know we had. So I'm gonna have those for sale. Um, talking to people about hip camp, talking to people about um, about the new fire extinguishers that hopefully will show up in time and possibly be able to do a demo. That will be really cool. Uh, ended up getting uh, in touch with that company and had a really good back and forth and um, chat with their marketing team. 
And uh, I think that'll be a cool relationship to have. Uh, and so I have an affiliate link for that. Um. <laughs> Oh, Backwoods Butcher says, tell you how you should be prepping. Start stretching to get ready for a bear hug when coming your way. Oh, boy. From the front or the back, Kyle? <laughs> what kind of stretching do I need to do? <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, yeah. And then I have links to, like, uh, affiliate products. Uh, the, the Blockstream Jade, I'll have a... I'll have a, a QR code that'll link right to the the site if you want to pick one up while you're standing there talking about it, uh, along with the discount code. Um, other things, just printing out a bunch bunch of signage, gonna have that out. Don't have a whole lot of physical products. I guess the the coffee, the um, silver sets, and um, silver sets coffee and rabbit foot keychains. I think are the the physical products I'm gonna have hanging around. But more than uh, more than anything, I just want to kind of meet the community, talk with people, get to know them, answer any questions and things like that, and uh, hang out with some like-minded folks for the weekend. So there is that. Oh, I get my choice if it's a front bear hug or a back bear hug. That's cool. That's cool. Um, anyway, let's see what else is on my list. I got a few things I want to hit before 15. Um, before 15 after one is if you were wondering where the interview was last night lots to talk about i don't think i mentioned it on the show i don't i think i forgot to mention it everywhere i went back and forth uh, quite a bit over the last couple of weeks and uh, decided i'm gonna table that until the first of the year i just have uh, a ton of stuff going on um um, uh, uh, I have a ton of stuff going on. I have, uh, some things I want to focus on. I want to focus on the morning show and, uh, the interviews were just eating time up and every Monday night it was before the interview. I always was happy. I did it. I was, um, I really enjoy it. It's one of the more, more enjoyable kinds of, uh, shows that I enjoy doing, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it got to be a little much right now. And I think for the end of the year, I want to focus on some other things. Hopefully, beginning of the year, uh, it'll work out to, to get back into it. I don't know, but that's a good uh, three months that I'm going to lay off and uh, just kind of roll with the morning show and see how it goes and see how it goes. Uh, MSC Rifle says I actually got to listen last night. I apologize. I apologize. I didn't say it anywhere. I think I told a couple people I was going back and forth with some uh, some content creators that I, I I kind of bounce things off of, and I made the decision to kind of move forward with it and and totally forgot to mention it. But uh, yeah, that's going to be on the shelf until the beginning of the year. If you want to go back and listen to the old interviews, they're all up on lots to talk about, or you can pick through the the full podcast feed and find them every Monday night. They will all be there. I'm not taking them down. And uh, man, if I get a good, if I get a good interview, if I get a good, um, get someone to talk to, huh? <laughs> she's over there like giggling at me. I don't know what uh, what's going on. If um, yeah, who knows? Something pops up or whatever. If I'm on somebody else's show and I want to release it, I'll just uh, I'll slide it in um, as a recorded and let you guys know when it gets published. But. As of right now, I'm not going to put the the money or the money, the time into it. And um... <laughs> Kyle says that uh, when I'm ready, he'll come back on so I can get my interview legs back under you because he's the easy button. He's certainly easy. He's easy. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to hit uh, before it's a kind of a twofer with the same the same topic. Uh, Friday is going to be a random topic Friday. I've just had some odds and ends things uh, sitting on uh, topic lists, show topic lists that just they weren't uh, enough meat to do a whole episode on, uh, not a whole 45 minutes. And um, I didn't know where to put them in. So I just been kind of accumulating them. And I think maybe once a month or every few weeks, I'm going to just do a random topic Friday. Because Fridays, why not? Why not just do uh, do all those that catch up as soon as they uh, the the list gets long enough. So that is Friday. If you if you want to um, submit a question or a topic you want me to touch on on that random topic Friday, you can go to the Telegram group, the the chat, or the channel. Uh, there's a pinned message in both that you can reply to with a question. 
uh, comment, a topic, or whatever you want me to touch on on that day. And then also you can email me info at the lots project.com and just put uh, RTF in the subject line. So I, I know to look for it, it and put that starred for a random topic Friday. Along with Random Topic Friday this week, we're going to be our first week of 15K giveaway. We did have a uh, a, a first week giveaway last week. Uh, the rules were I was going to give away 10K every week uh, if, as long as we had 10 entries into the drawing. And uh, as soon as we did the first week, we had 10 entries and gave it away the first week. We would, uh, we would just roll that up to 15K and uh, 15 entries. So... 15k on friday gonna give it away if we have 15 live entries on friday morning so spread the word tell your friends tell your family tell your bitcoin uh tell your bitcoin buddies that i'll be giving away some bitcoin on friday morning they need to listen live on youtube twitch twitter or facebook and then there will be a hashtag to enter um hashtag to enter <laughs> Kyle says, don't giggle too much, Corey. You've got a hug coming, too. Uh, <laughs> Back when since you might drive all night just to show up your camper at 7.15 to fuck up the Friday show. Well, it'll be an hour late because I start at 6 central. <laughs> oh, man. You don't know where I am. You don't know where I am. Anyway, let's wrap up this coffee chat, get into the topic of the day. And that topic of the day is brought to you by HipCamp. <clears throat> Have you ever heard of HipCamp? It is your ticket to discovering amazing, unique outdoor experiences with over 300,000 amazing uh, campsites, ranches, vineyards, public parks, and more. It's the ultimate platform for finding your next camping adventure. But that's not all. Ever thought of sharing your own slice of paradise with others? HipCamp also allows landowners to list their property as potential camping spots, earning them extra income while helping campers connect with nature. It's a win-win. I'm here to help both campers and hosts make the most out of HipCamp. As a consultant, I can guide campers to the best spots tailored to their preferences and assist hosts in creating appealing listings that attract more campers. Join the community of nature lovers today at HipCamp, where adventure awaits and memories are made for consulting services or to sign up directly Check the show notes for the links. Let's make great outdoors even greater together. Wait, let's make the great outdoors even greater together. There, I can read. Uh, good morning, Hanging Laundry. Thanks for joining this morning. Uh, <laughs> Kyle says, soon to include pig farms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and soon to include Effingham pig farms. <laughs> Well, that's Hip Camp. One of the things that uh, we're going to be doing out at Delinquents Gully is Hip Camp. So uh, if you were curious what that is when I'm talking about it, that is where we're at. Today, for uh, for the topic, I wanted to talk about kind of what Delinquents Gully is, uh, how I got involved with it, what my vision has always been for the property what uh what tim's vision is since it's his property uh and kind of what we've done so far and what the next steps are going to be on the property so that is uh that's where i came up with that plan for raw land vision for delinquents gully and here we go what uh what is delinquents gully well i think it was probably man it was uh I think we were down in Texas when when Tim broke the news that he had purchased purchased a property down in Tennessee. Tim Toolman Tim Cook, if you don't know him, uh, Toolman Tim's workshop, very close uh, affiliation with this show. Uh, I actually my first online interview, I believe, was on Tim's show. Uh, Might have been on Loose the Goose, but then I think uh, I think shortly after that was on Tim's show. And Tim and I have kind of been um, been close since then. We've talked uh, a lot about content creation, a lot about other things, and uh, we we've done a lot of collaborations together. So, gotten to know each other very well. Um, 
always hit it off. And man, he he said he he picked up a property here in Tennessee. One of the things I've been focusing on with what we do here when we we launched full time as a nomad uh, in RV was places that we stay where we stay. Um, we majority of the time stay at hip camp. We try to stay at uh, BLM land if we can, if it's available in the area. But the majority of our nights have been stayed um, rented through hip camp, um, book through hip camp, I guess. I don't know if it's rent is the right term, but where we would go stay on private property that's a peer to peer kind of campground. Basically, landowners, uh, whether it's their primary property, it's a secondary property or wherever, open up their property to two campers to come in and uh, and use a camping spot there. Some are full blown campgrounds uh, and run as such. Others are parking spots behind somebody's barn uh, back on their their back 40 acres or even in their uh, I've seen <laughs> band spots and things right in suburban lots. But anyway. I, I kind of focused on helping landowners get set up with that. I help uh, campers figure out how to navigate the site, how to book sites and find the, the right sites for them. And so when Tim brought, bought raw land in Tennessee and he is in uh, Canada, which kind of precludes him from being down here more than, uh, more than half the year uh, without becoming a resident. Exploring some paths beyond that, but uh, maybe maybe in the future. But as of right now, the 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 kind of limit he has for using that property is is six months minus a day to keep his Canadian citizenship. So he can't be here full time. It's not someplace he's going to have eyes on all the time. It's going to sit unused when he's not here. Uh, and we started talking and I said, you know, man, I, I wouldn't mind taking a look at that and seeing if maybe I can help you um, at least get use out of it when you're not here or I can uh, keep it maintained or get it in in condition when you do come to the U.S. that it's there and ready for you to use. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Um, and so, and so we talked about it. Uh, I said, you know what? I don't have anything really, really on the books after we were leaving Texas, we were down in Texas for the winter and, um, man, I was able to secure a spot to stay through the community. That was, I think it's like 25 minutes from, from Tim's property that he bought. So we made a deal. Um, I said, uh, you know what, we'll we'll rent this spot. We'll come up, we'll take a look and decide if it's something that we can work on. He was going to head down in the spring and uh, and meet up. And we were going to go and take a look and see, see my thoughts, see his thoughts. He bought it sight unseen. He had somebody come out, scope it out and uh, get a little footage for him, but had never set foot on it. And so that was going to be exciting. In the spring... We made our way up to Tennessee. We got settled in. We ended up heading out to find the the parcels that he bought. He originally bought two five acre ish parcels. They were they were five acres, give or take. And uh, we made our way out there. And man, it is raw. When I say raw land, it is, it is pretty raw. It was it's it seems to be to me as old. Um, land that was logged that was kind of selectively logged there's a lot of slash everywhere but uh it, it had been a while so it was all growing back in and um man there was an easement road cut into it there was no access the the weeds were kind of chest high um we Corey and i went out before tim came down before came down before tim came down we did a little prep work. We got out there. We kind of started hacking away with machetes and whatever land clearing equipment we had, uh, all manual, a little bit swinging as we go. Got our way onto the property, kind of got our way into where it wasn't as thick. The edges are always going to be the thickest once you bust through the edges. Into the forest, there's a lot of more open areas to kind of walk around. And so we kind of explored the 10 acres that uh, that, that they had picked up um picked up here 
we found the corners of the property. We found kind of some uh, some open spots. Tim's goal when he came down here the first time was kind of find um, find spots to make cabins, um, getaways, little bunkhouses. Tim's got a big family and was hoping that at some point that he would have um, quote unquote a compound. I don't think he needs a, a, a necessarily a compound, but uh, the vision of uh, multiple little cabins for the family to come out and use. Uh, so I, I kind of hacked away through, through the brush. Corey, Corey braved it with me. We experienced all sorts of fun Tennessee bugs that we had never, we had never really experienced in Minnesota. Um, hacked our way through the property and found several, several clearings that were already a little bit cleared. Uh, put those in the memory bank explored the property kind of got a feel for it it's very hilly it's um it's going to be a challenge um getting laterally across the property there's some ridges there's uh some creek uh some creek beds some uh, flowing springs things like that and some pretty significant uh hills and inclines so it's going to be we knew it was going to be a project to kind of um, connect the dots, like to be able to get front to back on the property, side to side, find all the edges, things like that. We worked as much as we could. And Tim and Becky came down for a visit <coughs> and we met out at the property and we it was kind of cool to give them a little bit of a tour of the property that they they purchased, they owned and they had never been on. Uh, we took a walk around. Carrie Brown uh, from Strong Roots Resources made a trip across from Knoxville all the way over to the other side of Tennessee and spent some time with us out there. Uh, it was great to see Carrie. Carrie's super knowledgeable if you're in that Knoxville area and um, in the Knoxville area and need some permaculture design or uh, anything like that, man, look up Strong Root Resources. Carrie is, uh, Carrie is the guy you want to talk to for sure. But uh, Tim... Carrie, Becky, Corey, and I all took a walk around, pointed out the sites to Tim that we had found. Um, you know, it was a quick, quick trip. It's not like he can spend a ton of time hanging out uh, and just and pondering his uh, pondering his decisions here. We walked around and we found these easy areas to work on. And uh, man, he picked a few. He picked a few uh, tentative sites. Picked a few for uh, the pick one for his main uh, settling site, and then several other clearings that uh, that we could put up structures for. Like I said, that compound, those extra extra bunk houses and things like that. So we marked that all out and uh, and made a plan. Uh, Corey and I were going to be down here. We decided we were going to stay for the summer, uh, except for the trip we had to make up to South Dakota. And so we would be local enough that we'd be able to pick away and um, and get some work done and hopefully get uh, some work done before fall SRF, which is coming up this weekend and uh, and have uh, have some place and some uh, some progress done. Next time Tim came down, he was already planning on doing a big road trip down to the states uh, for SRF and some other speaking engagements and spend some time out on the property. So that was the that was the initial plan. Corey and I spent some more time. We uh, we started making some trails. We we started doing some clearing, and um, man, we were able to get uh, trails put in to uh, some necessary places that we needed to be. At that point, we needed to go on our trip uh, to go get our residency. We took off. We were gone for almost a month. We came back. Uh, the weather was uh, was a little tough to get out there and work. It is uh, it is definitely it's raw land. It's uh, no power. It's no water uh, other than the natural flowing spring that's there. Uh, and it's uh, it's steep. Like I said, it's a lot of work to even just get through the slash. So going out there in 95 degrees and uh, 100% humidity was just not on my high priority list. Um, so I talked to Tim. I said, hey, we're not going to get a ton done, but I have a feeling that we're going to try to weather a Tennessee winter and see how that goes. So, man, I got a lot of time. I'm going to have a lot of time when the weather cools off. 
um, and it's it's nice and easy to work in the cooler weather uh, as the foliage starts dropping, as the bugs kind of dissipate a little bit. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be um, a lot better to work on. So we we kind of we we puttered away on the plan a little bit. We were focusing on this week to get things done um, enough to have the workday out there. And um, yeah, all of a sudden Tim's like, "Hey, dude, uh, we bought the we bought the lot next to us." I'm like, "What?" So, man, Tim. Uh, Tim pulled a surprise. He got a phone call and the the lot next to his came up for sale or became available. Something fell through or whatever. Uh, and he said, why not? So now he owns the three lots. Well, that kind of threw a, threw a, a little bit of a, a kink in the works when uh, I told him we had, a, we had a discussion when he came down here. I was like, man, you uh you really threw a loop into this thing. We did kind of all the vision and the planning off the two parcels, and then you added in this next one. Uh, I was excited because this last parcel was it seemed like there was a pretty easy access point to have a, a drive in, a drive in spot, and then a, a parking area without really bringing in heavy equipment, without putting in a culvert, without putting in a driveway which was going to have to be done on the other two uh, parcels. I got excited about that. I was like, hey, we got a parking area. I did some measurements. I did some marking. I was uh, I was getting ready to uh, go out and spend a day with the chainsaw, ripping in access and clearing a little bit of that parking lot. And then I, uh, I, I stopped for a moment and I went for a walk and realized that uh, we had done all the planning of the sites. We had done all the planning of the paths on the other two properties. And there wasn't a really good way to connect them. There were a couple of ridges. There were a couple of uh, ravines in between, uh, in between this new parking area, which was on the far side of the, the new property, that it was going to be very difficult to connect the new parking area to the old spot. So Tim came down recently. Now we're up to, to, to modern times. We're up to, uh, to recent times when Tim got down here a few weeks ago. He was able to spend a week down here and then had to go speak at another event. So uh, we, uh, we got a ton of work done. We kind of, when he got down here, we took another walk. We walked the property again. I explained um, how excited I was about the parking area and then how disappointed I was when I actually stopped and thought about it. <laughs> so that's where we're at. We uh, we decided that uh, that the the original plan was really good. Uh, the the way we wanted to kind of go about it and spread out through the property was was the the ideal place to go. That the parking area, although nice down in the corner, just doesn't work with the plans that we had made and the the main site. And I don't know if that new property really holds a better site for what he wants to do. Um, and we're looking at it really as kind of a buffer at this point and, uh, and maybe eventually spread into there and, uh, and develop some of that, but uh, using it as, as pretty much a buffer at this point, leaving it uh, pretty raw and uh, maybe some trails going through it. But anyway, anyway, we, uh, so we had trails we had trails up to their main site. I went up there uh, in preparation for Tim coming down here this weekend or this past uh, trip. And man, it was it was growing up to my chest. Here is a, a hot tip: if you're marking marking locations in uh, in some place that that uh, that fills in, that uh, has a bunch of foliage, that has a bunch of green foliage, when you mark spots in the spring when everything is down and not grown up. Definitely use pink or orange tape or paint. That fluorescent green, that uh, that that lime. No, it's not lime green. It's like fluorescent green tape. The yellow green tape. What color is that? Is it green? <laughs> She's looking at me like I can't see colors because I can't uh, very well. But um, that yellow green tape disappears. Absolutely disappears. So uh, do yourself a favor if you're going to mark things, use orange or pink especially if you're going to be looking for it when all the foliage is in. 
I uh, hunted down their main cabin site, which we, we kind of knew where it was. I walked right past the tree that was marked uh, several times, finally found them, and the weeds and uh, plants that it grew in were like chest to uh, head high on me. And so I said, man, this is, this is going to be uh, tough to work up here. So I took a day and cleared the whole area out, uh, chopped it down, and, uh, and got it smoothed out. And that's where we're going to be focusing on the workday this week, uh, one of the projects. But uh, when Tim got down here, we made a list. And um, one, it was a list to make comfort when people were coming to help work on the property. That was the main focus was being ready for workday this week. Um, we knew we wanted to have some place for people to shit um, and some place for people to set up camp and hopefully someplace for people to park. Well, we accomplished the first uh, the first thing on the list. We built an outhouse. That was the main objective. Uh, this also helps with hip camp, seeing that on a raw property this like, like this, hip camp uh, asks you to provide a toilet. And I figured once we got that up, we we uh, we knocked off a bunch of uh, a bunch of things on the list because now when people come to to uh, use the property in the community, if they want to do some work or we have a work day or a gathering of in community people uh, like a meetup, things like that, there are at least one facility. There is at least one uh, crapper for people to use now if we want to get the rest of the the property in line to put it on hip camp we have one thing checked off already we have that bathroom uh facilities that they like to have <coughs> um <laughs> oh hagen laundry says oh, brother my brother can't see a blaze orange golf ball on grass he uses the white ones oh man um blaze orange is uh yeah that's um i think that's hard for the colorblind to see um because that's that's why they use blaze orange for deer hunting i'm pretty sure the deer can't see the blaze i don't know maybe i think deer are colorblind um could be totally off on that but that was always what i was told why they wore blaze because uh, humans could see it and deer couldn't Anyway, we, we constructed uh, that outhouse. We went with a, a pretty simple uh, plans that we found online, uh, made it, and we were modifying it to be a, um, a composting toilet instead of uh, an outhouse, uh, like a pit outhouse. We, were, um, we want to be able to, um, to keep it where it is with the pit outhouse kind of smelly kind of kind of nasty you just dig a huge hole and you put the outhouse over it when the when the hole fills up you actually move the structure we were hoping to do something more um where we could move the compost uh there were plenty of composting toilet ideas online i know the the basic functioning of them since we use one in our travel trailer uh and we just wanted to make it on a bigger bigger scale uh, Brian out at Food Forest Farms uh, has a hip camp that he has a nice composting toilet that he built that I was able to see when I was out in Washington visiting him. And um, his uses a 55-gallon drum. He has hip camp on the property. He has a small festival on the property. Uh, he uses it quite a bit. And he changes out his 55-gallon drum once a year and then lets it sit uh, and then break down. That's what I was hoping to do. Uh, the long term, uh, let it uh, let it accumulate uh, less work, more volume, and uh, just kind of layer it in with pine chips as you use. Um, Kyle says deer can see blues, like blues clues. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're hoping to do fifty five gallon drum when we started constructing it and doing the measurements on everything, how they. Um, um, how everything laid out we needed a smaller drum i was able to to source a 30 gallon drum which should be a significant amount of space and accumulation and uh was able to source them right down the road from tim's property so when it starts to get full we'll have another one um we got that house house built one thing i wanted to do was uh install a urine diverter in it um hanging laundry says yeah the stench is a turnoff 
stench is a turnoff. And one thing that causes the stench is liquid in the solids bin. Uh, basically pee in the poo hole. <laughs> Kyle, there you go. Um, but if you can keep the urine and the, the solids uh, separate, it, it helps with the stink quite a bit. Uh, and so what we wanted to do, the composting toilet that we purchased for our camper has a, a urine diverting system. It keeps everything separate. I was trying to engineer something like that for the outhouse um, that was kind of there when you wanted it and not when you didn't need it. And so if, if uh, people needed to go in and just uh, just urinate, they were able to do it in a way that it's not going in the solids drum and ma basically making sewage. Um, so went round and round and round with that, uh, really kind of limited with the, the mechanics of how it can be, how it can work, um, size, uh, space restrictions, things like that. We've gone back and forth with a bunch of different ways. Corey, I think landed on the winner, uh, for this, this version, but in the end, I think what we decided, um, it hasn't happened yet. That's on the to-do list I have down here in a little bit. But um, I think the version going forward, we're just going to end up going to a two-seat model. Um, going to have two toilet seats in the outhouse. One's going to be for number one, and one's going to be for number two. Um, and if people can't figure out how to do that, then we'll just deal with what happens from that. There were other drawbacks and benefits to the different models and mechanics I was kind of thinking of. But I think in the end moving forward we're just going to adjust the building plans to make a two seat model in that outhouse so but currently there is an outhouse on site there is a drum underneath we have pine chips there so hey if you got a poo while you're there it is uh it is definitely doable and uh, man if you gotta relieve yourself grab a tree if you need to go inside yeah you can do it. It's not going to be the end of the world with volume that much and the, the pine chips. And hopefully as uh, as people are camping there, we have some charcoal. We have some uh, some stuff to throw in there. Hopefully, eventually we're going to be doing biochar. That's on my list down the line. That can also be added in for an odor absorber, things like that. Um <laughs> I knew, I knew Kyle was going to like that. Kyle says, pee in the poo hole. Most, most people got to pay for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, we have the outhouse done. That was, that was one of the goals we wanted before this week. We also wanted um, some areas cleared. We wanted the area for the main bunkhouse cleared, which is done. Uh, Tim and I have started... Um... <laughs> Tim and I have started carrying lumber up to that main site for the build. That is one thing about this property. Everything we're building is going to be hand packed in. So all the lumber to build cabins, all the materials, all everything is going to be hand packed in, at least for a while. Um, Tim and I have gone back and forth. And it, I mean, it's his property. He decided, he said, you know, I think I really want to keep it um, no vehicle access that the biggest thing he wants on there, the, the most vehicle he wants on there is, is a, as a four wheeler or a side-by-side, -side, uh, hopefully electric side-by-side -side is I think what he's thinking, but um, yeah, no, no vehicles, no, uh, no vehicle traffic up on the property. So uh, Kyle says, find some pack llamas. I am the pack llama, dude. <laughs> We're going to pack in, pack in uh, all the lumber, things like that. So we've started moving that up to the main site. We've also got some uh, areas kind of semi-cleared out that uh, can be used as campsites. Um, kind of getting a handle on how many people are going to be out and uh, and places to put everyone that that are, are already kind of cleared out and people can and make their own as far as campsites, but uh, have already picked out the, uh, the first few sites that we want to list on HipCamp. And if people can kind of start wearing those in, that would be great. <coughs> excuse me. So that's what we already, that's already what we have done. Oh, excuse me. More. Uh, we, we installed Comfrey on the property. This is a, this is a long-term project. This is a secondary um, side income project for the property can be used a bunch of different ways. 
if you follow the show at all, this if this isn't your first uh, first time listening, you know that uh, I am big into comfrey. I'm big into having it as a plant on your property, using it as a side hustle, using it to make money, or just using it for personal use. So I have access to a lot of it. I set I set myself up to be able to continue to sell roots when we sold our our property. So I got some of my root stock. I installed it on Tim's property. We did it as a gorilla planting mission, hopefully to prove out a system for people with secondary properties that want to get it established. Maybe they want to eventually move there. Maybe it's just a secondary property that they want the the plant established. So if they ever want to use it, they can. Um, MSU Rival says, do you have enough comfrey going? Um, well enough yeah i mean really technically we do uh we ended up man i beat the crap out of the samples that we sent out i had i had um my guy send me a bunch a box of comfrey and it was super hot it uh sat at the post office an extra couple days it added um it added it sat in the camper for a couple days it was like i said super hot that whole week by the time we got it out to the property, um, man, everything was bone dry. We were planting it basically in dust. I planted the roots. Some of them had started to rot because I waited so long. Some were viable. We picked three locations. All three were super dry and um, and basically no water whatsoever. The, covering them with dust. Planted the roots. Carried 12... Um, uh, carried 12 uh, plants up the hill or 12 gallons of water all the way up this hill and watered them in. I got two, two or three decent plants established. That's all I need. Um, once it's established on the property and I can, I can pull that plant and divide it infinitely uh, with the proper um, preparation of the soil. That's going to be fantastic. I just, um, uh, yeah, hang in laundry. Hold on one second. I will tell you exactly why uh, why I went with comfrey on the property. Um, but I got the I got two solid plants established, and they're on the lowest site, so it'll be easy to work with. If you want to bring roots, if you want to dig roots and and drop them on on the property, I have no problem with that. I'm sure Tim has no problem with that. Um, but I have these places marked off, and they're going to be cultivation sites for for this project. So. If you want to bring some, uh, yeah, otherwise it is uh, it is established and probably in the spring I'll be dividing this one or two plants up and really, really setting it in and in uh, permanently. Uh, Hang Laundry asks, can you tell, tell us why comfrey on the property? Um, comfrey is fantastic. Comfrey has, uh, I've discovered seven or eight different income streams that you can use from comfrey. Uh, the plant itself or products you make from this, the the um, the plant on a property like this, it's fantastic to have on because once it's established, it just grows. It grows, it dies, it grows, it dies. If you don't do anything with it, there's no problem. Uh, if you get a balking number four or balking number 14, I suggest number four, which is what I sell. Uh, it's non-invasive. So you're going to plant it. It's just going to stay where it's at. Wild comfrey is going to spread. It's going to be uh, taking over things. Um, why I put it on Tim's property is if I'm here um, running hip camp, if there's a hip camp host there, um, that person locally can use that plant to make a little side money. Uh, they can make salves and balms out of the leaves. They can then sell that to campers. They can sell it locally, uh, sell it to other um, other outlets that, that I can help you with. Uh, you can use the, the, the leaves uh, to make compost, to make comfrey tea. If uh, somebody was going out there to um, kind of settle in, if Tim ever came down and wanted to spend a bunch of time there and start uh, building garden, building soil, anything like that, they can use that comfrey leaves as a, as a soil conditioner. Uh, making comfrey tea, like I said, out of it will supercharge growing in plants that you want to grow out there. Um, hanging laundry says, do the deer eat it down? My experience with comfrey and deer in Minnesota was they eat it sparingly when they need it. Uh, they use it as a medicinal themselves from what I've observed. 
uh, rabbits, deer, um, and any uh, bear actually, I think, got into it a little bit. But my patch would be sporadically eaten. The stuff that we would grow down in the woods, uh, even in like our deer, by our deer food plots in the woods, they never got plowed down. Uh, it was like they selectively ate it when they needed it, if they were injured, if they needed um, some some relief from something, I think. Uh, and from as far as my research, that's that's what I found. They won't just go plow down a whole field of it. Ah, your results may vary. That's what I saw. Something is eating the comfrey out at Tim's property. There are deer. Uh, that is one of my MOs when I travel around the property to places that I, I haven't explored yet. I follow the deer trails. They know where to walk and uh, they've already beaten it down. So I see that uh, that some of the leaves are getting nibbled on. I don't know. My, my theory is on this property is I'm just going to plant more than they could eat. I'm going to plant it in enough locations that they're not going to hit them all. And I don't think they'd ever decimate it. But uh, yeah, I think putting it on the property is great. I think long term, I have a, a picture of a kind of a holistic model with the property um, that all the systems are going to work together. We have a ton of deadfall and slash. Um, MSU rifle says chickens are the only things that I have plow it down. Chickens will do that to anything, though. So uh, yeah, chickens, keep your chickens out of it uh, or don't let them know it's there or what it is. Uh, but a kind of holistic view of the property is, you know, we want to start building Tim's cabin. That is a goal for workday. We want to get an eight by eight cabin on. Um, these are our design. Um, we picked a design that's modular uh, so that we can add them on, build the base one, then add on another eight by eight, add on another eight by eight, eventually making something large um, that uh, that multiple people could stay in. Then we're going to move on and the kind of the goal and the progression would be a site is used for a hip camp tent site. It gets worn down, it gets cleared out, gets beaten down as it gets used. Um, and it almost prepares the site for another eight by eight cabin location. As we fill in these spots with eight by eight cabins, we're going to list those for rent also uh, for a little getaway. We're going to continue to develop tent sites in the locations where we want to end up putting bunk houses and progress through the property, uh, eventually filling out as many as Tim has planned for his quote unquote compound. So that's kind of the progression there with the, the site clearing. Um, there, like I said, there's a ton of, ton of deadfall and slash on the property. Um, one of the ways I've kind of come to, to, um, <laughs> MSU says it's hard to hide the comfrey because he put it in their run. Yeah, I mean, if that's what it's for, if that's what it's for, then it is what it is. Um, but uh, one of the things I came up with to clear the slash and the deadfall on this property, which there is enough for years and years and years of uh, experimentation, is to kind of mess around with biochar. I have a, um, I have kind of a, a prototype on paper of a system that could come in and be used to do this. It's gonna be a little bit of funding. We're gonna to have to, it's gonna be expensive to set up. So I'm not sure how this is gonna work, but uh, if we can get that trial going, if none, nonetheless, I'm gonna make some biochar. I'd like to have some on site to use in the, in the composting toilet for odor control and also um, tie in that comfrey that somebody at that uh, hanging laundry asked about and make um, biochar with that's charged with comfrey tea. That is kind of the end goal. Um, Hunter says it's not a compound; it's a villa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that one in Tim's ear to later today when I see him. Yeah, we're building delinquents gully villas. Perfect. Perfect. But anyway, they're gonna kind of um, they're gonna. <laughs> kind of want to work everything together we want to make uh make biochar out of the waste on the property we want to grow comfrey which will will grow the soil will be usable uh across the board for a bunch of different stuff we want to use um use the the clearings to rent for tent sites for a little extra income and also 
uh, preparing those to put another small cabin site on and then utilize the cabins when Tim isn't in town or none of his family are in town to use it. Um, and then possibly host events there. Uh, we're, we're having event one, the work day, but uh, possibly, you know, PDCs, workshops, uh, getaways for um, like Boy Scout troops or uh, youth groups, things like that. Uh, bringing them out and and giving them uh, that primitive off-grid camping experience. Uh, really, actually, pretty close and in a great location for um, from a, a, a couple of uh, larger areas. So <coughs> I'm excited. I'm excited about the property. Tim's kind of all in um, on my ideas. He he uh, he sees the value in adding the things that uh that i see for the property uh and they work very well with what his goals are his plans um his his desires to get use out of the property so i'm excited for that I i'm glad i was able to to work on this project and continue to work on this project with him uh we're talking about other things that that may be in the works too uh but if you have an extra property and you want me to take a peek, uh, kind of look at, uh, I look at a whole bunch of things. I look at the local area, look at the property, look at your goals, look at my ideas, uh, things I know how to do, things that I come up with um, that I haven't necessarily experimented with, but uh, that might be a good trial run on the property, kind of like the biochar project that will eventually happen at Tim's. Man, I, I would love to talk to you and maybe you just don't know what is out there and what's available. Um, and maybe we can come up with a plan to uh, to work on your property the same way that we're working on delinquent scullies. So I'm excited. Uh, if you want to follow along with what's going on, the progress, uh, I try to do video updates uh, of any significant change, any significant um, projects that we work on. Or uh, just if I if I have some time out there to do a little video update, but I put those on YouTube under a playlist called Delinquent Scully. If you're uh, if you're a subscriber to the channel and you have alerts on, you'll get an alert every time. Um, <laughs> you can always uh, uh, get alerts every time I put a new video up for that. Uh, otherwise, you, there is a link in the video description for Delinquent Scully playlist, and you can uh, you can click on that and bookmark it, or however you find the things you like to find on YouTube. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get out there with Tim today. Uh, get this final prep for people to come out and hang out. Uh, it sounds like we're gonna have some campers there uh, starting Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night, and then. Um, then uh, rolling into Thursday, we got a. It sounds like we got a pretty decent crew that are going to be staying out there on Thursday night, and then moving up to SRF. Pip says uh, I got a pile of basil seeds I can pick up on Thursday. Yeah, I think gorilla planting, uh, gorilla planting on the property is interesting. Um, there are a ton of different kind of little microclimates. There's a there's a lot of desert. Uh, at the moment, for sure, a lot of dusty, non, uh, it doesn't really hold water. But like I said, there's a flowing little creek, um, creek, uh, spring esque type of, uh, of sections in the property where I think uh, some gorilla planting go really good or just broadcasting seeds. Uh, I have a couple areas that are marked out. We will be doing more of that where we'll be doing some trialing of different plants and uh, things like that that we've put on the property. So, hey, man, if uh, if you got seeds, uh, you can always always bring them up and, and throw them out. I do actually have a tote of seeds that I might start sprinkling some here and there just to get some edibles out on that property just in case. So. Anyway, guys, uh, it's coming up here in an hour. We're going to wrap things up. I got to get the dogs for a walk. I got to get out there and spend uh, spend time with Tim with uh, this last work day before the work day. Get everything kind of in line and ready for people to show up. I'm, uh, I'm glad you uh, were able to join me this morning. Tomorrow, if you want to hang out again and, uh, and hear some of the struggles of RVing with pets, uh, the, the episode is going to be RV pet challenges, things that we've experienced with our situation, which is a little out of the norm. I don't think most people are traveling around with three St. Bernard's in their RV, but I will also touch on some things that we saw from other 
uh, RV folks, full time and just weekenders, uh, vacationers that uh, were traveling with pets as we were trying to figure out what to do with ours. So tomorrow, RV pet challenges should be a good one. Should definitely be a good one. Uh, other than that, if you enjoyed the show and you'd like to participate in the live comments, you can always join the live recording Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Central on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. Please consider sharing it with others. You can find a post about the episode along with links to all my social media services I offer, recommended products, and companies I'm affiliated with at thelotsproject.com. Be sure to listen on one of your favorite podcasts, 2.0 Value for Value podcast players like Podverse or Fountain.fm. Make it a great day, guys, and we will catch up with you in the morning. I can see the light.